Hi, I just wanted to give some instructions here for the organism comparison assignment. So learning intention on this one, we're learning what protozoans are and what characteristics make them similar to animals to explore what organisms were the likely common ancestors of all animal life on Earth. Again, they're not animals themselves, but they're fairly similar. Success criteria, I'll be successful when excuse me, I can research information to determine if an organism has all features that are found in protozoans, and I can compare how some organisms that are not protozoans may have some features that are similar to protozoans and some that are different. So again, you're going to be filling out a chart here, looking at different um, specific organisms here. Um, so I have a zooflagellate, and in parentheses behind them, I tried to put like a larger category that it belongs to. Um, if you're having trouble figuring out if the specific organism has these characteristics, you can also try to look to see like, okay, would the category that it's a part of have these characteristics? And either way, that should help you narrow down for what you're looking for. So we're looking at this for the zooflagellate, the earthworm, which is an animal, the paramecium, which is a type of ciliate, the spirochete, which is a type of bacterium, the amoeba, which is a type of sarcodina, the sunflower, which is a type of plant, the yeast, which is a type of fungus, and the plasmodium, which is a type of sporozoan. So for each one of these, you're going to basically be um, determining the same set of characteristics, and you can mark it with an X or some other mark of your choice if it does have that characteristic, or just leave it blank if it does not have that characteristic. The very last column just says, is it a protozoan? Does it have all the features? If you have marks in all five boxes in front of this one, go ahead and put a mark in this box too, or just say yes, either way is fine. Um, but if it does not have all of those features, it is not a protozoan. You can either leave this blank or say no, um, either of those is fine. So let's go through one example together here with the zooflagellate just to show what it would look like to look up this info. This one is very search engine intensive. So the first quality we're looking for on the zooflagellate is eukaryotic. The cell nucleus has a membrane. So as far as what I would search, I'm going to open up a new tab here. And I tend to use Google. I know most folks tend to, but again, use whichever search engine suits you the best. So the way that I would word this is saying, <clears throat> excuse me, is a zooflagellate eukaryotic? Now, again, some of these terms are difficult to spell, so I don't blame you if you copy and paste here. So let's demonstrate what we're looking at here. I'm going to highlight zooflagellate. I'm going to right-click it and hit copy, or you can also do Control-C if you want to copy that way. So I can type in here, is a zooflagellate? And again, I pasted that in there with Control-V. And I want to know if it is, is a zooflagellate eukaryotic? And again, it's starting to autofill for me here a little bit. So you'll get a little bit of varied results here from Google. So I want you to try and analyze multiple sources in terms of what it's indicating here. So um, if you see something that looks like it's a fairly good source, and again, your mileage may vary, um, I know you've probably been told in the past Wikipedia might not be a good source, but honestly, for summary info like this, I think it's okay. Let's look first here at this National Institute of Health link. So this one, fairly complicated as far as language, but it mentions to us zooflagellates are non-photosynthetic flagellates without plastids or cell walls, which feed by phagocytosis or endocytosis. They are the most diverse of all eukaryotes and gave rise directly or indirectly to most, if not all, other groups of eukaryotes. So is it a eukaryote? Absolutely. This abstract is telling us that yes, it definitely is one and is probably one of the groups that was the origin point for most eukaryotes. The other thing that it gave us some details on here, it says, which feed by phagocytosis or endocytosis, and it mentioned here they're non-photosynthetic. That actually gives us a clue about another category here. They are heterotrophic. They eat organic matter. The opposite of that would be autotrophic, which means going through photosynthesis. So if it talks about the organism eating anywhere, like eating organic matter, it is heterotrophic. If it eats food, it's a heterotroph. And again, I can look at other sources here. Let's look at the Wikipedia one as well. 
do, do, do. so here they they kind of give a larger um, reference for it. Um, in older systems of classification, again, um, zomesticophora, excuse me, probably pronouncing that wrong, is a phylum more commonly known as zooflagellates within the kingdom Protista. Organisms within this group have a spherical, elongated body with a single central nucleus. They are single-celled, heterotrophic eukaryotes, and may form symbiotic relationships with other organisms, including trichomonas. So, again, we've got some clues about some other things that we were looking for here as well. We know now they're unicellular. They're made of one cell. They're single-celled organisms. It also confirmed for us, again, it's heterotrophic. It's a eukaryote. So those parts definitely um, are true as well. So the only other things we're looking for now is are they capable of asexual reproduction and are they modal? So I'm going to back up again. So for asexual, I'm going to say can so flagellates reproduce asexually. So again, this one is from a homework study one. This one mentions, like many protists, zooflagellates primarily reproduce asexually by binary fission. So far, this seems like a yes. In this case, binary fission splitting into two parts. If I look down a little further, here's another one. This is um, from a charter school's um, text. It says zooflagellates generally reproduce asexually by binary fission. Um, this is a Quizlet that talks about zooflagellates reproducing asexually. Um, there's a Quora response that mentions pro protists can reproduce asexually through binary fission. Another one from University at Buffalo, zooflagellates reproduce asexually. Seems like we have a lot of confirmation that, yes, they are capable of asexual reproduction. Now, again, it, you may have some individual species here that are capable of sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So be careful. Like if it says that it can um, go through sexual reproduction, that doesn't necessarily mean it can't do asexual as well. So just keep that in mind. Last one, is it modal? Can it move independently? There's a couple of different ways to look at this one. We can do just a simple search. So we can say R, so flagellates, modal. So it mentions here, zooflagellates are a type of protozoan that possess one or more flagella for motility. The flagella are these whip-like structures that are coming off the back. Um, this is Giardia specifically. That's the type of zooflagellate this one is. So it is modal. We are getting confirmation of that. Again, if we um, scroll down to other areas here, um, this one mentions free living as kind of a synonym for modal, basically that it's not stuck in one place. This one here says sporozoans are non-modal. So again, keep in mind, we're not looking at a sporozoan here. It's a flagellate. This is why it's important to kind of look at various sources as far as what we're talking about here. It does say flagellates have one too many flagella that function in motility. We do know the zooflagellate is a type of flagellate because, again, we had that as the subcategory for it. The other thing I would recommend as far as trying to figure out if it's modal is to see if you can find a video on YouTube of it moving. So let's say, let's again do control V to paste in zooflagellate again. Oops. Okay. It, it did it twice for me. And then I'm going to type in movement. So here's a little video called zooflagellates. I click on it. So here we go. We're seeing the actual clip. So here is a zooflagellate that they're tracking here, and we can see it's capable of independent movement. It is moving around in the video. So again, if you're uncertain about whether or not something can move on its own, um, again, you can search for whether or not it's modal, but um, looking at video evidence like this is also a really great way to just see like, okay, here's the movement and what it looks like. So I'll exit out of that. So again, we can confirm it is modal. <clears throat> so is it a protozoan? Does it have all the features? We can, again, either put the mark there to say, yes, it does, or we can type in, yes, either option is fine. So again, that's what we're looking for as far as analyzing these different organisms. So some of them are protozoans, some of them are not. Um, you're just going to be looking at the characteristics. And again, if they have all of those things matching up to one another. 
So um, it makes for an interesting point of comparison between them. Again, kind of look at the interesting differences that you notice between different organisms and how, you know, they fit in um, in some ways with these groups, but sometimes they've got some differences to them, especially look at the comparison to the earthworm as an animal. I'll tell you right away, animals and protozoans are not part of the same group, but it should be interesting for you to see what makes um, the two of them different from one another. So again, I hope that explanation makes sense. I know this one is a little bit complicated because it uses a lot of advanced terminology, but if you're very careful about looking through your sources as you search through it, you should be able to complete this one.